Forest is perhaps one of my favourite designed levels in the classic Tomb Raider. It's not a long level at all, but it's still the most exciting and interesting level I've played. The fact that they were able to make a level that takes place on a moving train in this engine is extremely impressive. At certain points you even get to see Von Croy's helicopter fly past and jeeps driving alongside the train so that more goons can jump on and try and take you out. Annoyingly it's mostly those ninja goons that can block bullets but it's still satisfying to blast them off the side of the train with your shotgun and watch them get dragged under the wheels. Yeah, take that you stupid son of a bitch. It's the closest this series has gotten so far to letting players actually play the action scenes they'd normally have to watch in a video. It's a shame then that this is the only level like this in the whole game and I kinda wish there were more like this. Also, for any of you sadists that are wondering what happens if you fall off the train, yeah, that's what happens. A crowbar is collected in this level which you can use to pry open doors, remove objects from walls, and activate switches that are missing their handles. After you use it to detach the rear boxcars from the rest of the train, you arrive in Alexandria, which is our next hub level of the game. Here you encounter French Shatner again, who has a study in the main courtyard. La. You are alive. Lara tells him that she's lost the amulets of Von Croy, but is reassured when Prof tells her that they still have time to find the pieces of armor hidden in Cleopatra's palace before Von Croy's men do. First, you must get into the catacombs. Von Croy has them completely sealed up, and I fear he will soon have the armor. Over my dead body. Foreshadowing! Now that you have your next objective, you're free to explore Alexandria to work out where to go next. There are some coastal ruins that you can go to enter the various tombs, but the first place you'll need to visit is a place called Egyptian Adventure. Oh boy, a theme park! What a brilliant idea for a location in a game like this! Oh, I hope they have abandoned rides that you can use in this. Oh, no, better yet, I hope there are water slides that you can use too. Oh, no, actually, I hope there's a haunted house where there are several, like, cardboard cutout ghosts and mummies that jump out you and try and scare you, like, ooh, spooky! It's not gonna be anything like that, is it? Well, get ready to be disappointed because this place is far from an adventure, let me tell you. For starters, there's only a small handful of rooms that you can actually go into, and how about this for a fun game for all the family? A room with multiple hidden spike pits that you can only see when you look into a mirror. Yes, actual working spike traps that can kill you are in a family adventure park. There's suspension of disbelief, and then there's believing that Lara lives in a world where there's a theme park in Egypt with attractions that can kill you. Or even better, a shooting gallery where you slide down a slope and onto a raised platform, and then have multiple targets to snipe with a crossbow before the platform drops you into a fucking spike pit. Oh, yeah, I can totally see people queuing out the door for this thing. Just imagine what an advert for this place would have been like. Roll up, roll up. Come see the wonder that is Alexandria's Egyptian adventure. Explore over three small rooms of genuine Egyptian history. See genuine cardboard artifacts from the tombs of the pharaohs. Gasp in awe at our model replica of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Visit our genuine robot snake charmer, who will dazzle and amaze you with his ability to summon a magic climbing rope. Are you brave enough to venture into our deadly room of death to retrieve the sacred crossbow of Amon-Ra? It may look like a simple task, but watch your step if you want to visit our gift shop later. Whoa there! Careful now! You almost got eaten by our own genuinely totally not fake Egyptian mummy! Okay, Tutankhamun, back to bed now, you naughty boy! And finally, test your skills at our amazing shooting gallery! Hit all the targets with our trademark super accurate we promised crossbow, and you can win the prize and leave safe in the knowledge that you and your family have survived to live another day! So what are you waiting for? Come to Egyptian Adventure today! Adventure awaits! Warning, Egyptian Adventure is not liable for any injuries, loss of limbs, impalements, lacerations, PTSD, childhood trauma, or loss of loved ones whilst visiting. Good lord, the scoped aiming in this game is clunky as all hell. Being so used to shooters with much better aim movement for so long and then going back to something like this was a struggle, let me tell you. You can forget trying to precisely aim this thing because to even make the most minimal of adjustments to target something, it is nigh on impossible to do so. So thank goodness that the hitboxes for each target here are extremely generous to compensate for this. But even then, you can still somehow miss a target even if your crosshair is directly on top of it. 
In fact, aside from this section here, the scope on the crossbow is pretty useless in most combat situations, other than just to peck at the health of some distant enemies, or to shoot at some switches that you can't reach. Most of the time you'll be dealing with enemies that are up close, and once you find the magnum, you can equip the scope on that, and it's a lot more efficient at taking things out. At both long and short ranges. If it wasn't for the explosive rounds, I'd hesitate to say that the crossbow is an unnecessary addition to Lara's arsenal that doesn't really add much to the overall gameplay other than giving you something extra to shoot with. The poison arrows you can collect sound interesting on paper as they drain the health of an enemy instead of just dealing a fixed amount of damage to them. Unfortunately, in reality, it seems to take multiple shots to take enemies down with them anyway, and the poison doesn't affect them in the same way that it does with you. Oh yeah, you can get poisoned in this game, and if you thought it was annoying before, just wait till you see how it works in this game. Yes, the poison mechanic, which I didn't really like from Tomb Raider 3, is back, and it is worse than before here. There are certain enemies in this game that can poison you, and if they succeed in landing a hit on you, not only does it drain your health, but it also causes the screen to start violently stretching and shrinking like you're drunk off your ass on Grand Theft Auto or something. I take back everything that I'd said before in my last video about being poisoned, because at least if you got poisoned in Tomb Raider 3, you could still actually navigate the bloody level to try and find a health kit to use. Here, if I didn't have any stocked up or nearby, I would be fucked. Just straight up fucked. There is a saving grace to all of this, and that is this game has a really generous save system that allows you to save wherever and whenever you want to, and in multiple slots. So that means if you're clever and make multiple save files, if anything bad was to happen, like you get stuck somewhere, you've always got a backup to go back to. Once you encounter some more skelly boys and solve another puzzle, you descend into the Temple of Poseidon, where you encounter one of the more frustrating parts of this game. <laughs> swinging from one rope to another. Now you wouldn't think that something as simple as this would be all that challenging. Sure, there's a certain level of skill involved here, but that's not what makes this so difficult. What makes this so difficult is the fact that the camera flat out lies to you. You could be looking dead straight at another rope and you'd still not be guaranteed to be anywhere near enough to grab it. <laughs> Just look at how many tries this took me to do. I was here for a good solid while trying to jump one gap because I'd either be a fraction too far to the left or too far to the right and end up in Faceplant City. Before all that though, you encounter a new enemy type called Elementals, who are small, annoying ghost type enemies that can't be killed, can constantly attack you, and can sometimes even set you on fire. There is only one way that you can actually get rid of these things, and that is to make them fly into these random winged bird statue things. I, I, how is anyone supposed to be able to work out that you need to do that without a fucking guide? Eventually you'll find the first and second pieces of the armor, and after encountering Von Croy again, you travel to the underwater temple to open the door into Cleopatra's palace. Once inside, you encounter some flying golden bird... the things that can poison you, and trap chambers full of yet more DEATH BEETLES! Oh great, these guys again. But hey, it's not all that bad. Look, you get a cute little clockwork beetly thing to play with. And look, you can use it to disarm these spike traps so you can safely walk through. <laughs> no, Beetle, no! Why? Why did he have to leave? Why do they do this to me? He was my friend. <laughs> Not that you would ever think first off to do this, that hole in the ground where you put the beetle doesn't even look the slightest bit interactable. So a lot of first time players, myself included, spent a lot of time needlessly wandering around the level trying to find something desperately in order to use this thing, when really the solution to all of their problems was right underneath their feet all along. And that's a major problem that I have with this game. A lot of the puzzles here require you to either have past knowledge of it or for you to exhaust all other options first before either lucking into the solution or trying something so desperately random that it just so happens to work. 
The boulder in the first part of the game? You'd have to have known to have shot it instead of walking up to it to try and push it over. The doors underwater? You had to know that you needed to swim to the middle of it and hold down the action button until she opens it. Those flying dickheads, they needed to be lured into those statues to die. And now this beetle needs you to drop it down a hole on a part of the floor that doesn't in any way look like you can interact with it. And that's not the last of it either. There are a few more examples that we'll get to later on, but you can really tell that this game was made during the golden age of the rental market. All these pseudo clever puzzle solutions only serve to artificially extend the game's runtime by making it seem harder to beat than it actually is. You don't feel accomplished or satisfied or clever when beating these puzzles, you feel cheated. And if this game is gonna cheat me, then game on, motherfucker. And it's a good job I read that guide too, because it turns out that you can end up soft locking yourself by using this beetle too many times and breaking it before you've cleared a path to the items that you need. So you find more pieces of Exodia and open the door to the next room with an item that you've collected called Pharaoh's Pillar that totally looks like an ancient Egyptian dildo. Hashtag highbrow humor. In this room, you stand on a platform that creates a golden statue of Lara. The statue doesn't move, but it can get attacked by both you and nearby enemies, with the damage then transferring onto your own health bar. So not only do you need to stop that from happening, but you also have to scale the room to find a way to escape. And yes, you did hear me correctly earlier when I said that Lara can actually attack this thing and shoot herself, which makes targeting the right enemy nigh on impossible unless you somehow land a shot with a crossbow scope. But good luck trying to manually aim shots at a fast moving target whilst using a scoped weapon with questionable hit detection. More power to you, I guess. Eventually, Lara reaches Cleopatra's throne room and decides to briefly play queen for a day before then being rudely interrupted by Boris, the Soviet love hammer. No, of course not. They're actually mystical guardians who are giant walking dog boys that carry around large scepters and shoot giant laser beams at you. Ah, shit. That was gonna be my next card. So you beat them, collect the last two pieces of armor, and then arrive back at Professor Hercule Poirot's house to find that he has been kidnapped by Von Croy. She reads the note left for her on the table and finds out that Von Croy has taken the professor to Cairo, and in exchange for his life, he wants the armor of Horus. Lara then immediately steals the professor's bike to chase after him because fuck personal property, and we then cut to Von Croy's convoy making their way across the desert to Cairo. Along the way, they're engulfed by a sudden plague of locusts, and as the camera pans back to the main car, it's revealed that Von Croy has been possessed by Set. By the time that Lara catches up to them, there are already several crashed helicopters outside the city walls, and the city appears to be under siege. The next level has you ow, stop, stop doing that please, ow, hey, cut that to get, ow, damn it, I said stop. Where is that even coming from anyway? Oh, son of a bitch, are you kidding me? He's up there? Who in the hell thought this was a good idea to immediately start an urban level with a hit scanning enemy that you can't even fucking see? Did we really need to have some shrimp dick piss ant cho chugger tucked away on a roof to attack me immediately as the level loaded? <sighs> it's okay. It's fine, they're gone now, I've taken care of them, and now all that's left is for me to hop onto my trusty steed and ride off to victory! A few moments later. Ah, oh, would you look at that. This level's a pile of wank. Good god, this bike controls like absolute ass. It's bad enough that this thing has the turning circle of a bus, but it also has the ground clearance of a fucking Sherman tank driven by an elephant. All this while taking place in a level where you have multiple jumps to make with this thing with barely enough speed to be able to do it. In fact, this bike is so bad at this that you spend most of the time in this level searching for parts to upgrade it. Not that you know that you need to do this, of course, because this game does a terrible job of letting you know what you actually need to do. Ugh. It also doesn't help that various important jumps are within just enough reach to trick you into thinking that you can make them. So you'll spend a large amount of time just trying again and again and again, only to either end up crashing or falling short. And once you get fed up of trying that and go exploring, you'll end up coming across random items in arbitrary locations that you'll have no clue as to how they're used, so you'll likely end up going, eh, what the hell, and just try combining them together so you can effectively make a booster so your bike can go faster. Seriously, how the hell did anyone complete this game without a guide back then? I've essentially spent all 
all this time going around this level finding random items to effectively give my bike a Lara's aid, and I had no clue at all that I needed to do it. Do you know what's fun? Having to go through a door that's directly in the line of fire of two massive chain gun turrets with no discernible way to avoid being shot at. Ooh, or getting easily snagged on walls if you're just a fraction too close to them which will instantly kill your momentum and leave you crashing into things. Isn't that just the best? In fact, this snagging issue has been a problem since the very first Tomb Raider game, and it's sadly a lot more noticeable here. More often than not, if you ran or swam too close to a wall or surface, Lara would end up being stuck to it and you would have to try and wriggle her free. It wasn't too much of a problem when environments were open enough to allow you to have enough clearance, but in the last revelation you have environments that are extremely compact which lead to even more instances where snagging becomes a major problem. It actually led me to almost drowning on several occasions because I wanted to do something as simple as swim through a gap but I kept getting caught on the geometry and it wouldn't let me past. Look, let's just get through this thing already. There's only a few more levels of this game left to go so let's power on through and I'll try my best to keep the rage at bay. During all this hopping between levels, you run into a few soldiers who tried to stop Von Set's invasion but ended up being mortally wounded. One of them advises where to find a detonator for a minefield that apparently Lara already knows about, and the other helps you locate some Lara's aid for your bike. After that, you bring him to the temple where this big ass serpent thing is guarding the entrance, and because he's mortally wounded, the soldier decides to go full kamikaze on its ass by driving into it with a big truck. Once inside the temple you free French Shatner who explains that Von Croy is possessed by Set and is digging into the tombs to find the tablet with Set's binding incantation. By the way, I just love the don't fucking touch me vibes Lara is giving off when he hugs her here. She just looks so pissed off, it's brilliant. Next we cut to Von Croy discovering the tablet and then using his newly acquired god powers to resurrect some dead crusaders. Because reasons. Oh, and by the way, he's now whispering everything he says because... I guess possession? But now he sounds like a kid who's up late secretly playing Fortnite on their Xbox and trying their hardest not to wake up their parents. We have it. The ancient ceremonial tablet. Take it and prepare it. Eventually after making your way through the level via another puzzle, you run into both these knights and have to work out how to take care of them. And of course you can't shoot them or even blow them up with explosives for some reason, so you have to instead find another way to escape the room. The way out is blocked by a wooden structure, so naturally you'd either try shooting it or blowing it up to move it out the way. But you work out pretty quickly that that also doesn't work. Great. And now it's time for me to play one of my favorite games, what the fuck am I supposed to do? For everyone who hasn't played this game before, I'm gonna give you a moment to guess what you actually have to do here. Just think about what you would do in this situation. And remember, your weapons are completely off the table, so be creative, okay? Go. Oh, I'm sorry, but that buzzer means that we are out of time. So, Let's see how you did. Look, I'm just gonna save you guys a lot of time and trouble and just say what the solution is and the likely case is that most of you probably got this wrong, so here it goes. It turns out that instead of doing a perfectly plausible thing like blowing it up or setting it on fire, you actually need to bait one of these undead knights into swinging their swords into it, which then knocks it down to allow you to escape. No, I am not kidding. Do you finally see where I'm coming from with these puzzle solutions now? After you climb out, you meet Von Croy again, who was ah, 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 creepy eyes. Don't like it. Come to me, child. Do not fear your old colleague. I don't like it. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. I merely require the armor that you hold in your possession. And in return? I will grant you vigor as those around you fall. You shall command. The ultimate power, that of life or death over those you choose at your side. And in return, they will bow at your feet and give worship. Got my fair share of that already. Yeah, of course she does. Does Set even realize who he's talking to here? Saying that he'll bestow unimaginable power over life and death with people worshipping her isn't something that's new to Lara. It's a life that she's living right now. In fact, I think that's the bio for her LinkedIn page. During all of this, she manages to re-steal the amulet and escape with it whilst also sealing Von Croy inside this chamber. The next level has you arriving at the famous Sphinx where more of Von Croy's goons are waiting for her and because of the current shitstorm going down, the whole area is now surrounded by several giant pits that are extremely easy to fall into. 
Your next objective is to enter the chamber under the Sphinx. And don't ask how she knows that she needs to do this, just accept it. So you need to explore the area to find a shovel to dig into it. You find a plank of wood and a metal blade, which with their powers combined, make a spade. So you return back to the Sphinx, begin digging at this point in the ground. Again, don't ask, just do. And you arrive at the chamber underneath the Sphinx. Now, I know I've already made plenty of critiques in this video about puzzles having obscure solutions to them, but they all pale in comparison to this next room. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the room that almost broke me. I was already pretty wound up and fatigued at this point, but this room almost single-handedly killed all motivation I had to play this game all the way to the end on my first time round with it. It is that bad. At a first glance, it looks like just your standard Switch puzzle with a few enemies affair, but it's far, far more devious than that. For starters, you have not only one, but two invincibles to deal with in an extremely tight space that you either have to trap in a room or exploit a bug where they don't even go to attack you so long as you don't walk in front of them which I did. Once that's taken care of, you then have seven gates to open with no clue where they lead to or what combination is needed to do so. In the room is a skeleton, probably of someone who didn't have the fucking walkthrough for this game, that's holding a scrap of paper with a list of symbols that correlate to letters in our alphabet. On the wall behind the bulls are three switches, with three Egyptian letters of the alphabet. So after collecting this clue, my next thought was, okay, this must mean that the combinations to each gate are located above or somewhere near it. No! There are no combinations to be seen anywhere. So initially I just had to guess what combination opens what gate. So like me, you'll start entering random combinations, hoping that it will end up doing something good like opening up a gate to the way forward. I entered my first combination and I got a small nugget of joy when one of the gates slid open. Success, I thought. So full of excitement, I entered the room to explore the area further, but quickly ran into three corridors full of bladed traps that were really difficult to avoid. But regardless, I managed to make it past these and after diving through some more blade anuses, I pulled a switch thinking that it will open another gate. But nope. The only thing that it did do was let me out the same way that I came in. Turns out this room is a trap designed to punish people who entered the wrong combination. So that means unless you somehow lucked into the correct combination on your first time, you are stuck with trial and error until you start making some progress. To make things worse, if you end up opening the trap room, you are locked out of entering any other combinations until you go all the way to the switch at the end of the gauntlet and pull it again. Once you do get to another chain, you have different challenges to face in order to collect items needed to unlock the way forward. One has a maze of crawl spaces full of spike pits, another has hieroglyph puzzles where you play lucky dip but with more DEATH BEETLES! The next is a water maze that's extremely easy to get lost in and snagged on the walls, goody goody, and the final room is just a small room with some crocodiles. Huh. This all took me about an hour of trial and error just to get through, and by this point I was suffering from some pretty bad visual fatigue and wanted nothing more than to just be finished with this game. So it didn't really help that I was essentially stuck in a room with no hints at all on how to solve these puzzles, and a scrap of paper in my inventory which had letters on that were completely useless. Or so I thought. Turns out that each symbol on the wall needed to be matched up to the letter that it represents on the paper list. Then once you have all three letters, you then have to arrange them in alphabetical order in our language, which then gives you your first combination. This seems like it should be a eureka moment, but I only found out about this because I bothered to look this up on Stella's Tomb Raider guide afterwards. And that was only because I just couldn't believe how bad this section was, and I really wanted to know what the actual developer intended way of doing this was. Not only that, but on my second playthrough I found out, completely by accident, that this room with the exit door contains the combinations to every other door. All you need to do is look up these gaps in the roof with your binoculars, with what I assume is night vision turned on, to be able to see them. I can't even. Okay, that last part I fully admit is kind of my own fault, but I shouldn't have to resort to a guide in order to get myself through a section, when really all the devs needed to do is a better job of giving the tools to the player in order to solve it. Once you make your way further in the level, you enter a building where you see a guard being attacked by a giant scorpion. You have an opportunity to save him, and if you do, you get a short scene where he rewards you with an extra key that grants you access to a fuck ton of ammo. However, if, like me, your first instinct was to rain unholy hellfire upon this giant abomination, collateral be damned, then you end up killing the guard and losing the armory key forever. 
and then watch in disbelief as the scorpion is left still standing and you inexplicably collapse and die for no fucking reason. Scorpion wins. Fatality. So with that all sorted, you begin to climb this nearby pyramid. To do so, you have to hop from one block to the other, making sure that each block you land on is something that you can actually land on. Should you accidentally land on a slope, you'll end up sliding all the way down to the bottom or right off a cliff into your death, which I can assure you is something that you will do more than once. And on top of that, you also have to dodge random giant blocks that can fall down and crush you to Keshi's castle style. And you regularly get ambushed by giant beetles who can push you off the ledge you're standing on and right to your death. Uh, um, beetles. Once you reach the top of the pyramid, you unlock the door and go inside to explore the tomb to recover one of the four star keys you need to resurrect Horus. Don't ask how she knows about these, just accept it and keep going. Eventually you arrive back at the Sphinx from earlier and spend the next portion of the game searching for the rest of the star keys on the way to the Great Pyramid. This is the point I really feel the game starts to lose complete control of its pacing. By now I was expecting to have the Great Pyramid and my inevitable showdown with Set, but here I am, 31 levels in, and I'm faced with yet another multiple item treasure hunt that has me collecting stars like it's Super Fucking Mario 64. The next level, Mustaba, has you jumping across large pits, exploring dark caves, and some extremely dull and uninteresting huts to find the remaining star keys. There is a pretty creative puzzle where you have an elemental symbol written on the front of three podiums, and then it's up to you to use the items that you have to create those elements and then put them on top of the corresponding podium to then open the door to the next area, which is pretty neat. The other puzzle I liked was in a room with three monkey statues with levers in front of them. Each one can summon a different kind of monkey, but only one summons a good monkey to open the door for you. The others either give you an evil monkey that attacks you, or better yet, a ghost monkey, who also attacks you, and you can't shoot. Do you get the feeling that the people who built this room really had a thing for monkeys? Once the next two stars have been collected, you finally arrive at the foot of the Great Pyramid, and if you thought the last pyramid was tough to climb, just wait till you give this one a try. You'd think that you'd need to reach the top of this thing, but in reality you actually need to make it to the far left side of this pyramid and to yet another level. So get ready to face more giant beetles, falling rocks, and blocks that you think are completely safe to jump on, but actually aren't and can slide you all the way back to the fucking beginning. And this is the point where I officially gave up on my first playthrough of this game. I was just sick and tired of the seemingly never-ending bullshit this game was throwing at me and I just thought, you know what, I need a break. I can't be dealing with this. And it wasn't until my second playthrough of this game that I realised just how close to the end I really was. So after a year of putting it off and also making several other Tomb Raider videos, please go check them out, I finally made it through this section and arrived at the entrance to the Great Pyramid, ready to finish this game once and for all. So I quickly made my way inside and fought more of Von Croy's goons, and eventually I found the chamber where the star keys go. So finally I could start to put an end to this whole mess and confront Set to bring an end to- Wait, wait, wait hang on, why am I missing a star? How could I be missing a star? I've explored literally everywhere I needed to. Why are you doing this to me, game? Why? But it turns out... They were right. I was missing a star. And do you want to know where it was? It's inside another pyramid that's across from the one that I'm in and can only be accessed via a secret passage that you can only open by pushing this block of rubble onto a floor tile with a symbol that's just barely fucking visible. And you want to know just how I found out about this? It wasn't from backtracking to a room that I had explored previously to find something that I missed. It wasn't from using clues in the environment around me to discover a new location. No, 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 no. It was by getting so frustrated with the game that I had to use a guide to tell me this because the game completely sucks at objective conveyance. I shouldn't have to go into a Tomb Raider game and then rely on the Stella Fairy like it's Navi from the fucking Ocarina of Time to help me get through it. I am officially done with this game's obscure and obtuse bullshit. In fact, I'm so far past giving a fuck that that's just me over. Just done. Gone. Game over, man. Bye, Felicia. I'm Kate. This game is Leo, and there sure as shit isn't any room on this board for two. Just give me the damn star already so I can just get on with my life and stop doing this- ah. 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 Oh. Oh. 
What the hell was that? Oh, no matter. I just need to keep playing this thing. Yes. Keep playing. Oh. So once all the stars have been collected, you can finally open the final door to Bowser. Sorry, I mean open the giant sunroof to the pyramid to let a giant beam of moonlight inside. Because Horace needs a tan. And after that, you're still not done. You then have to make your way further into the pyramid and solve more puzzles. This time you have to decant the right amount of water needed in order to perfectly balance some scales. Get it right and the door opens to the next chamber. But get it wrong and you have to fight a monster and try again. Fun! You then do this three times and eventually make your way down to the chamber where Horace statue is. So finally you can place all the pieces of armor you've collected throughout the whole game onto him so he then can be resurrected to battle set. Of course not, that would be too easy. What actually happens is that Set swoops in to bind with the statue instead, just as Horus is about to be resurrected, meaning all that time and effort that you put into finding each piece of the armor of Horus before Von Croy was completely pointless. So now you have a literal god walking amongst Earth that you can't kill, and the only thing that you can do is to recover the amulet of Horus from the lake and then find a way to escape the room and then seal him inside. You mean to tell me that after 34 levels of this game, all we've essentially accomplished by the end of it is to help Set move into a bigger house with a swimming pool. Oh, fuck this game. Once you've sealed the entrance to the chamber, you then make good on your escape. And after a few tricky jumps, you make it to the final cutscene. Lara emerges from the pyramid in pretty bad shape. But just as she's about to reach the exit, Von Croy appears to help her make it out. She hesitates not knowing if he's still possessed, but before she can be sure, the chamber starts to collapse around her. As she dashes to the exit, the floor beneath her gives way, causing her to nearly fall. Von Croy tries to reach over to pull Lara to safety, but the chamber collapses before he can do so. Barely making it out alive, Von Croy then turns round to face the ruins of the temple. Presuming that Lara has passed away, he then removes his hat and bows his head in mourning, and the game fades to black. And that is Tomb Raider The Last Revelation, a game loved by many, but sadly not by me. This game was a tough one for me to talk about as I knew that this one was held in such high regard by a lot of people who remember playing it, but I wanted to make sure that I gave this game an honest and fair critique without any kind of bias or nostalgia getting in the way. Let's start with the things that I did like about this game. The updated graphics I thought looked really good in this game. The new lighting gives every room so much more depth and really helps to bring them all to life. The higher level of detail on each texture is really well done, and the higher polygon count for each character makes them look a lot less blocky and a lot more well proportioned. While I personally didn't like being in one part of the world for this game, I did appreciate the designs of some of the temples and tombs that you get to visit. The traps in this game are also really creative and genuinely surprised me on more than one occasion, and the way that you actually had to use environmental elements like water and fire to solve puzzles was really cool. I also really like the method of storytelling in this game. It seems to take a more cinematic approach and uses creative camera techniques to set the tone and the mood. The FMVs were a little bit of a letdown because they're almost completely lacking in visual continuity, with locations not matching their in-game counterparts, Lara's outfits suddenly changing, and other oddities like suddenly going from dual 9mm to desert frickin' eagles. But overall, they're still a pretty big step up from the last game in terms of production quality and are a welcome addition to the series. The music, while not bad, just didn't really stand out for me much here. It does a great job of setting the mood for the game, but for the most part it just seemed to take more of a back seat this time around. The sound effects are for the most part excellent and suit the game perfectly. Though to this day I still don't know why occasionally the atmosphere track sounds like I'm inside the lower intestine of someone with an upset stomach. Uh. I just don't, I don't know. Answers on a postcard please for that one. The enemies in this game are actually some of the most balanced of the series so far, and even though you have some cheap enemies like the death beetles, the floating ghost skull, 
things and the flying scarabs, I found the rest of them to be enjoyable to fight. I mean, hell, if the game can actually make me not hate the gun enemies in it, then I'd actually say it's done something right here. But there were more things that this game did that I really, really didn't enjoy, and it tipped the balance over from it being a fairly positive experience to being a pretty negative one for me, sadly. Perhaps my biggest complaint is that it tries way too hard to be clever with some of its puzzles. You either have to have prior knowledge on how to solve them beforehand, or just completely luck out and end up finding the solution accidentally with no skill involved at all. And it's not my intention to shame people who use guides at all, because if you want to use a guide to get through a game, then you are more than entitled to do so and more power to you. But this game's puzzles are just obscure and obtuse to a point where I feel that using a guide is almost mandatory to be able to get through them. And that's not a sign of good design. I've managed to get by relatively guide-free for most of the last three Tomb Raider games that I've covered, but it wasn't until Tomb Raider 3's London levels that I started to really need outside help to get through them. Here they seem to have almost taken the worst elements from those levels and doubled down on them by making this game's levels more complex and easier to get lost in. The later levels in particular, where you enter Cairo and work your way to the Great Pyramid, are a mixture of some of the most tedious and creative level designs of the classic series, and the end result was something that I both ended up hating and respecting. And that's really the best description that I can give this game. It's a game that I could clearly tell was trying to take the series in new directions and improve upon the existing formula, and no matter how many times it fucked up on that, and it annoyed me and drove me nuts, I couldn't help but feel a massive amount of respect for it. Like, me and this game had some kind of connection that no one else had. Like, the game is a part of me that has been missing for so long. And now that I have finally found it, 